I hate being lost. I will stop and ask for directions. I'm not that much of a guy when it comes to being lost. But there was this one time that I went for a walk in the woods, hiking, if you will. I wouldn't call it much of hiking just because I was just going for a walk. And once I got to kind of like in the woods somewhere, wherever I thought I was going, I looked around and I forgot in which direction I had come. I had gotten turned around from dodging branches and sticks and different things that were in the woods and I found myself lost in the woods. And in that moment, panic, I can remember my chest getting tight, panic kicking in because I had no idea how to get back from where I was. Obviously the last resort, God, if you get me out of this one, I will serve you and honor you all the days of my life. And I kind of just turned and started heading in a direction. And and I walked back into the backyard and to where I was going. and, And it was all good. We are in a series right now called Seeker. Seeker. Does anybody remember the days when you were going to take a road trip and you had to pull out an atlas map? And it wasn't like a pocket-sized map. I mean, this thing spanned from the passenger seat over into the driver's seat. And you would have to trace with your finger down this map. It didn't even have exit numbers on it. You just had to kind of know, like, okay, just keep an eye out. 84 is coming up. Uh, So, you know, come on. Did anybody ever take a piece of string to the legend and then, like, try to figure out how many miles that was on the Atlas map? For those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, yes, I am 41 years old. (laughs) I was born before the Internet. Huh? Born before cellular phones and before GPSs. My family traveled quite often for many different reasons, and my mom and dad were professionals at the Atlas map. In fact, it was family tradition before any trip. We'd pull the big map out, we'd put it, and it was broken up by state, so I mean, this thing was thick too. And, and so uh, we'd have it on the kitchen table, and we'd all kind of trace with our finger what our route was going to be and how we were going to get to our destination. Any time we needed to know where to turn, we had to pull out the map. Then the internet came along, and something called Google Maps or MapQuest came about, Yahoo Maps. And you would go and you would put where you are, where you want to go, and you had to print out the directions and hope that they were correct. Because if not, You had all faith in it, and you left the Atlas home, and now you are just going to be totally lost. But in reality, nobody uses either one of those anymore. We now have stepped into the age of the GPS, the Global Positioning System. And if you didn't know by now, you carry one with you all the time. Somebody knows where you are every second, every day, every hour, every minute the global positioning system. The GPS project, believe it or not, started by the U.S. Department of Defense in 1973. It was the first prototype spacecraft was launched then in 1978, and then they had a full constellation of satellites in outer space, 24 satellites operational by 1993. I just like this kind of stuff. I'm sorry to get nerdy on you. Originally, GPS was limited to use only by the United States military, and civilian use was allowed in the 1980s following an executive order from President Ronald Reagan. In 2000, the U.S. uh, Congress authorized the modernization efforts of something called the GPS-3, where they degraded it 
um, in a project called Selective Availability. And I'm, I'm not trying to get too nerdy, but this is just, it's, we're going to get somewhere with this, okay? And then President Bill Clinton discontinued that uh, later on as we move forward. What that did was the Selective Availability only allowed us to have about a 16-foot accuracy of our GPS. So driving on the highway, getting information 16 feet late could mean missing your exit. The latest stage of accuracy enhanced, they created what's called the L5 band, is what we now uh, use. It's been deployed uh, since 2018. The L5 band GPS can be pinpoint accurate within 11 inches, 11.8 inches. So that's when it's find my phone, it will get you within 11 inches of where that phone is at. That's pretty accurate from something up in space telling you where it's at. We have become too dependent, in my opinion, on the GPS. No? You disagree? You love your GPS? We don't even read road signs anymore. Well, my GPS says go down this road. But the road is closed. It doesn't matter. The GPS said it. As, as the GPS has grown more mainstream, we've heard of accidents of people driving into lakes, people driving onto train tracks when there's a train there, people going the wrong way on a one-way street. It is estimated that the GPS has caused over 300,000 car accidents. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about that for a second. We all love to blame the electronics, don't we? There's something wrong with my computer. Now, can we be honest about something? And all the tech people are going to love this. If, if your job is technology, you're going to love this. Computers can only do what someone tells them to do. They can only input data and output data. They cannot do anything else. So 99 times out of 100, when there's a problem with the computer, it's human error. It's human error, okay? Do you remember the old saying, maybe your parents said this to you, and especially if you're in New York, this is how the saying was said. If your friends told you to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. Now, somewhere else in America, they wouldn't say Brooklyn Bridge, but we all know that we were raised here, and moms say, if they told you to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge, would you? Well, according to the studies, yes, we would. According to the GPS studies, if it told you to drive into a lake, guess what? Yes, I would drive into the lake, okay? But we love blaming our electronics, and the real issue behind GPS accidents is not the GPS, but it's humans being humans. Humans being humans. We're talking about a GPS today. We're talking about seeking direction, finding our way. The number one human error of the GPS, you ready? This is point number one, and again, we will make this biblical soon. <laughs> the number one error, ready, of the GPS is overconfidence in how smart your navigation system is or isn't. It's overconfidence. It's like the day that we downloaded the MapQuest directions with no backup plan. And you got down the road just to realize that the streets had changed, there was construction, and there was no detour options. Today, we don't need to remember any directions. In fact, we've dumbed things down so much that we don't remember phone numbers anymore. We've dumbed it down to where people could no longer remember the four-digit pin code that they put in their phone to open it, so now we have face recognition. <laughs> or fingerprint. 
I don't have to remember anymore, right? We've become overconfident in our electronics making decisions for us. And I'm about to upset some people because now I'm about to get it biblical. And you're about to get upset at me, some people in the room today and watching online. But I do believe that one of my callings in life is to call a spade a spade and to inform people of incorrect teaching. I, I don't teach topics just because they feel good. I don't teach topics just because that's what I was taught in Bible school. All right? I do not believe that we should feel, fill believers' minds or people's minds with false hopes. With false hopes. I do believe that this is a time in life where what we need to be preaching is hope. We need hope more than ever. But false hope will never be turned into actual hope. Misquoted scriptures will never turn into co correctly quoted blessings. Can we say that again? Misquoted scriptures will never be turned into correctly quoted blessings. So, my opinion, many Christians fail to achieve the greatness that God has designed in their lives because they believe wrongly about God. They believe wrongly about God. Okay? Today's topic is this, final destination. Final destination, it's like the movie. Final destination. Answering this question today, where am I going in life? Where am I going in life? What's, what's the direction that I'm supposed to be going? What's my purpose? And any time someone's going to teach on this, they inevitably are going to go to the most misquoted scripture in the entire Bible. Want to talk about it today? Jeremiah 29, 11. We love this verse, and I'm serious. I pull the church and I ask people, what's their favorite verse in the Bible? Inevitably, 50% of the church, Jeremiah 29, 11. <laughs> and I say, okay, quote Jeremiah 29, 11. And they quote the NIV translation. Ready? Come on, you know it. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper! And not to harm, plans to give you a hope and a future. Here it is, right there. God's in control. We love the song, Jesus take the wheel, take it from my hand. When's the last time you actually turned the wheel over to Jesus? No, what, 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 what we're actually saying, when we sing a song like that, no, Jesus, you take the wheel. You force it out of my hand, and you take it out, because I'm not going to actually give it. I'm not going to give you control of my life, but if you take it, then what am I, then, you know. We, believers in church put so much more on God than any responsibility on themselves. I did not drive my car into the lake. The GPS said it. Come on. We have to understand proper Bible interpretation. I, I, I know I'm going to ruffle feathers. I know my, my watch count probably just dropped by half online. <laughs> we have to understand proper Bible interpretation. Not all translations of the Bible translated all words correctly. Okay? They're translations of the Hebrew language or the Greek language. So let's look at this Jeremiah 29, 11 in the King James Version. Ready? And you tell me if this changes things. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Can you believe that that's even the same verse? But what about the plans? But what about the plans part? Because I don't have to plan if he planned. 
I don't have to do it if he did it. I don't have to know my future if he did it. I don't have to do anything if he's doing it. But he says, I just want you to know what I think about you. We have to understand in context that, that, that people were believing that God is this harsh, killing, destroying God. He says, wait, I just want you to know how I feel about you. I'm so in love with you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They're not for evil, like some people think it is, but they're for good. I'm thinking about a hope and a future for you. I'm dreaming with you and for you. That's the context of this. But it's easier to believe that I don't, do, that I don't have to do anything about the plans for my life. I've seen Christians claim this exact verse for the reason that they have not completed the call of God in their life. They like to sing the song, I'm waiting on you, waiting on you, patiently waiting on you. And God's like, no, you're just kind of being lazy. Because waiting is, is, is not a lazy term. Waiting was actually an action term. And it meant to Wait on the Lord like a waiter would wait. I'm serving you, Lord. I'm serving you, Lord. I'm serving you, Lord. Patiently serving you, Lord. Not, I'm sitting back waiting for God to do more. We love blaming the detours and the pitfalls on the GPS. Today, our GPS that we're discussing is God's positioning spirit God's positioning spirit I gotta tell you something today God never promised that he was going to control every aspect of your life or your future God never promised that he was going to control every aspect of your life or your future he never promised that he was going to do that he never 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 promised that he was going to control it all we have to understand that. A lot of things happen in the world today because we live in an evil world that God is not involved in. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's easier to believe because we can blame somebody. Well, well God was in control. Well, did you give him control? Let's talk about some things that God is not in control of. Can we? God was not in control of what you ate for dinner last night. God did not cook that. God did not cook that. God is not making you eat the third jelly donut from the box. <laughs> the Holy Spirit may be telling you, you have diabetes, stop! You say, what? Well, I'm just going to pray the calories the way. Hmm. <laughs> God is not in control of what you just bought on your credit card yesterday. That you didn't have the money to buy, but you just had to have it. God wasn't in control of that. But then we want to pray, God, get me out of debt. But you never put him in control of the finances. Come, can, we, can we talk? God's only in control of your health if you put him in control of your health. Amen. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> if you get your behind out of the driver's seat Amen. and put him in it. Yes, Come on, somebody. I'm just, hey, listen, I listen, listen. I know, I know I could get up here and lie to you. I could get up here and lie to you and it would feel a lot better. But this is why Christianity is not working. Because we're not taking responsibility for the life that we now live. It says that the life that we now live, we live by faith in the Son of God. But it means that we need to go do what God called us to do. All right. Here's what I know about my GPS, and this is where I'm going to step into some sticky stuff. Here's what I know about my GPS. I cannot open my GPS and then say, take me to my future. I can't do that. 
I cannot open up my GPS and say, take me to happiness. Here's what I know about my GPS. The only thing that my GPS can do is tell me where I am right now. That's all it does. It tells me where I am right now. So in fact, the way a GPS works is this. The GPS says, where is your global positioning right now? And then it takes a map and it says you're here and you wanna go there. So now let me create another layer, a digital layer. Here's where you are. Now let me put a map underneath where you are and show you how to get there. My GPS is not smart enough to tell me where I want to go. I have to put the destination of where I want to go into my GPS. I have to choose that. If I want to go from here and drive to Florida, I have to put the Florida address in my GPS. It is not smart enough to say, oh, wait a second, you look like you need a vacation. <laughs> Let me send you to Florida today. You thought you're going to work? Ha! Surprise! Taking you to Disney today. <laughs> Can I ask you a question today? And, and this is maybe one of those deep questions that maybe you need to go home and think about. What do you want in life? What do you want in life? What do you want in your future? What, what is it that burns within you that you want to accomplish before the end of time? What is it that you want? And that might be a tough question because for those in here today and watching online that are highly codependent, you've never thought about that. You've lived your life for everybody else. Well, I have some dreams, but my spouse. I have some dreams, but my kids. I have some dreams, but my parents. Listen, I'm going to give you some tips today. What do you want in life? You only begin the journey with God's positioning spirit when you plug those coordinates into your system. You plug that into the system. You plug that into the system. I am choosing today to chase my dreams. Now the Holy Spirit comes along and says, I will empower you unto all good works. Too many of us are sitting back and blaming God for not doing anything in life. And, and there's going to be this harsh reality when we stand before the Lord and, and we're all going to hear, if, if, if we've accepted Jesus Christ, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But then we're going to go to this other place where he's going to say, what did you do with the life I entrusted you with? Well, I was waiting on you, <laughs> waiting on you. So I don't know, did I? And God's saying, boy, I was waiting on you, <laughs> waiting on you. Yeah, but I was waiting on you. <laughs> Tell God what it is you want. Plug it into the system and allow the Spirit to direct you. Philippians 4, 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God where you want to go. Tell him what you need and thank him that it's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Tell God's positioning spirit what it is you want where do you want to go in this life? 
I want to share a verse with you today in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs was written by the wisest man to have ever lived. His name is Solomon. And this is what he writes to us in Proverbs 16, 9. A man's mind plans his way as he journeys through life. But the Lord directs his steps and establishes them. Woo! Hey! Hey! The word but there does not negate our part. He's saying what your responsibility is and what God's responsibility is. Come on, we're all seeking a better future. He says this, so a man's mind, he plans his way. As he journeys through life, a man decides, I want KFC today. You decide that. It wasn't like, Holy Spirit, lead me to what thou wantest me to consume for lunches. Come on, somebody, is it Chinese or Italian? Which, which one are we having today for lunch? Because that's pretty much what it is. If it ain't home cooking barbecue, it's Chinese or Italian. We have, we have a meatball parms, or we have a kung pao chicken? Huh? Ooh, God, I didn't think about that. Kung pao. A man's mind. You're choosing, you're making decisions day in and day out. Where are you going? And then... God's positioning spirit comes alongside, and he establishes and directs your step. Okay, this is where you want to go. This is the goal. Okay, step here. Okay, now step here. I'm going to open a door for you here. Step through that door. Okay. You create the where it is you want to go, and God will ensure that you get there. That's the walk of God faith too many of us are sitting looking at the sky at night waiting for a message to be painted in the clouds to tell us where to go and God is saying I want to make your dreams come true step one to seeking direction for your life is to have an idea of where you'd like to go well I don't know well let me ask you a few questions what are you great at what are you great at? And stop being insecure. Stop being insecure. What are you great at? What do you already do for a hobby? What do you do that you would love to do even if you didn't get paid for it? That's where we have to start. What have you always done as a kid? What do you always find yourself leaning towards? Come on. Think about that. That's where we need to start when we're talking about what's in me. That's an indication of the direction that you should go. What do I dream of doing when all the responsibilities are done and all the bills are paid and the kids are grown and out of the house? What am I going to do someday? Start thinking about that. That's where we need to start. Where do you want to go? What do you want in life? The second reason for car accidents is that we blame the GPS is driver inattention and distraction. Driver, inattention, and distraction. And, and listen, we've seen this, right? Many of us have seen drivers having their morning coffee while they're driving. And it's one thing to have like a little coffee cup, but you see people with those big coffee cups, and when they drink it, it's up over their eyes. The morning commute to the city, we see people talking on their phone, although we're not supposed to. We've seen people reading the newspaper! I saw a dude one time who had some kind of contraption on his steering wheel and his laptop was on his steering wheel. E. Sure, it is hard to eliminate all distractions. Who isn't guilty of tuning into a better song while driving down the highway? Come on. Your favorite radio station is doing like a fundraiser, so you switch to another station while driving. We've all been guilty of it. But in a study conducted by the Network of Employers for Traffic Safety, spilling hot coffee and dropping something on the floor are the two most common driver distractions. 
But the National Highway Traffic Commission estimates that driver distraction plays a role in 25 to 30 percent of roughly 1.2 million car crashes each year. Driver distraction. Driver distraction. Can I ask you today, are you distracted? Are you distracted? Have you been distracted from the dream that you had in your heart from a child? Has COVID distracted you from running the race of life with all endurance? Has, has the circumstances of life distracted you from having a successful marriage? Are we driving this life distracted? Are you distracted by past failures? Are you distracted by hurts that are in your heart? Are you distracted by past attempts to do what you love, only to find disappointment and more stress? The problem, therefore, has never been the GPS, but what our expectations are from the GPS. Come on, somebody. Hear me say this clearly. God Almighty, is absolutely in control of everything you give him control of. Absolutely. As you surrender to him, he steps in and leads you. As you surrender to him, he will encourage you and lift you up. But the things that you still want to hold control of, he gave you a gift called free will. Let's close out today by looking at some uplifting Bible verses. Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Come on. He's leading us in the way that we should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. I'm there. I'm protecting. I'll get you there. Psalm 37, verse 4, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. What's in your heart? Philippians 2, 13, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. A few months ago, I had coffee with a friend. And he's also a church member, and he said, Pastor Mike, I got a dream. I got a dream of opening a coffee shop. But not just a coffee shop, a coffee shop that had like organic fruits and vegetables. And, and, and a coffee shop that partners with other businesses so that we can help each other and, and grow. And I was like, man, what a crazy idea in the middle of COVID shutdown. Right? Why would you think about opening up an eatery when over 50% of the eateries in the United States will be closed this year? But that was not what was in my heart. That's what was in his heart. Well, he submitted that dream to the Lord, prayed about it, sought counsel, and took steps of faith. Not only was this gentleman able to open his business this week. He's been published in several newspapers and articles for his community involvement, his community work, and his connection with other businesses in the community. And watch, my friend submitted the destination of his dream to God's positioning spirit. God, this is what's within me. This is what I dream of. This is what I desire. And he followed the open doors that God created. Obviously, there have been times of ups and downs in that journey. There have been roads that he had been going down that he had to make turns. Because God's positioning spirit said, ah, we got to go this way with this. We got to go this way. But God was with him. This is how the spiritual GPS works. 
but it only works if you make the purchase. You gotta buy the GPS. You gotta buy the GPS. It does no good looking at someone else's spiritual positioning system. It does no good trying to build your own faith based upon the story that I just told you. You gotta purchase a relationship with God for yourself. You've got to surrender to the Lord. He will download His Spirit within you that will lead you and guide you into all truth. And then you've got to make a decision each day to follow it. To follow it. Tell me now, for those who have been believers for any length of time, you're driving down the road and for some reason you decided to go a different route to work a way that you don't normally go. Now, we would all love to have heard that there was some kind of catastrophic car accident on the other route so that we had confirmation that we heard from God. But we don't always need confirmation to obedience. We don't always need confirmation to obedience. That, that, that's the elementary side. That's needing physical proof of a spiritual direction. But today... Maybe you're hearing this and you're like, well, I have no idea where I'm supposed to go with my life. I have no idea what God wants for me. Well, we got to download the GPS. We got to download the Spirit of God. We got to have a relationship with Him. We need to connect with Him because it says this. Listen to this one. A little over seven years ago, I was in a bad spot. eh? wanted a son more than anything else and we had lost a pregnancy that I believed was my son and I was hurt man I was I was devastated I was mad at God I was mad at church people because they somehow felt like saying church things was going to make me somehow feel better maybe it's just not God's will I had a problem with that I had a problem with some idiot telling me that it wasn't God's will and then I had a problem with God because why wouldn't it be his will? So a little over seven years ago, I kind of had it out with God. I'm not, I, I don't have the thing I've dreamed of my whole life. I love my daughters. They bring me so much joy. I love spoiling them. I love it. But God, I, I want a boy that can be like me and wrestle me and I leave my stuff to when I'm old. And I had a moment with God, I got away and I was letting him have it because I wasn't fulfilling a dream in my life. And in this moment, he said to me, I have given you the desires of your heart. I said, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I thought that we were having the desire of my heart and then it was gone. No, you didn't. So I opened up the Bible and I looked at the verse and he said to me, read it again. I have given you the desires of your heart. And no, you didn't. No, you didn't give me the desire of my heart. So read it again. And it was probably about, I don't know, 150 times after I read it that my intelligence caught up to what God was trying to show me he said look I gave you the desire that's in your heart I put that desire in your heart I put that desire in your heart I put that dream in your heart this is what the verse was saying he was saying I put it there those dreams, those desires, those visions, those wants. One day I want to be this. One day I want to do this. I put those in you. And in that moment, understand that it wasn't God who took something from me, but that there was an evil one who is in the world that steals, kills, and destroys. I was able to then surrender that dream again to the Lord and say, Holy Spirit, this is my dream. This is my want. 
This is my desire. Put it in your hands. And a little over seven years ago, we gave birth to my son. I tell you this today, not to, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to encourage you today. Don't stop on the dream. Don't stop on the dream. Don't, don't, don't blame God for not fulfilling your dream because you're waiting for him to do something. He says, I'm waiting for you to take a step. I'm waiting for you to take a step of faith. I'm waiting for you to put the destination into the GPS and I will get you there. If you're here today and you've never made a commitment to Jesus Christ, you've never made him the Lord of your life, we'd like to pray a prayer with you today that you could download this spiritual GPS into your life. And here at Family Church, we want you to feel comfortable, so we all pray it with you out loud as well. And that prayer goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're watching online today, would you click that hand raise button or type amen if you prayed that prayer for the very first time? One of our online hosts would love to follow up with you and give you some information called Starting Point. It's, our, it's a daily devotional for the first seven days of being a believer or being a, a Christian. If you're here today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you give me the honor of celebrating you for just a few seconds? Would you just wave at me real quick and say, hey, that was me, I prayed that today for the first time. Over there, all right, anybody else? Real quick. Anybody else? Awesome. Great, great, great. Maybe, maybe you're here today and you're like, ah, I'm still on the fence, I don't know about this whole church thing, but the experience was okay. We have a book available at the Welcome Center called Welcome Home. It talks about Christianity, what we believe. It has a bunch of information about church and God and all that kind of stuff. It is our gift to you if you'd like a little bit more information moving forward in what Christianity looks like. Let me bless you today. Father, we thank you for the word today that it will never return to you void but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. We thank you, Lord, that we are protected and safe. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing us and helping us to release the dreams and the visions that are within us that, that, that you will now lead us into all truth with. Lord, today, I pray that everything we set our hands to would prosper and be successful. We're blessed coming in. We'll be blessed going out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On your way out, there is offering baskets at the doors.